Let's get lost in Jersey with Rachel and Jeanette, a podcast where we talk about life just outside New York City. Let's get started. Hello. Hey, Jeanette. Um, okay. So we never talk about current events. Is that a thing? Should we do that? <laughs> current events? Uh, no, yeah. because everything that I've seen on the news is not good. Yeah. I mean, actually, somehow I found myself also in the good news, some sort of good news uh, Instagram. And I've been really into it. You know, I've been like, oh, oh that's, like, that's really good. That's really good. And then I, you may have seen that I posted a Kermit the Frog uh, story. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I love this Kermit the Frog video I have to and believe me you know what a big fan I am a Snoopy I know I'm like well I people, think you're Snoopy's number one fan I well it's for some reason people always told me I was had the persona of Snoopy which is what weird yeah everybody's what like does that just, mean? I don't know they're like you remind him you know it, it just can't has come up through the years that, like, <laughs> I, I want to know more about that what to, how old were you when you got called Snoopy I was I I was very young. I was like, when I was little, we were coming back from, we had to walk home from one of the, it was like a camp, the camp Snoopy movie. Like it was a a Charlie Brown goes to camp or something like that. And I remember Mm -hmm. my friend and I, we had to walk home and we were like talking about it. And, and then later I told someone that, you know, that that somebody said that, you know, they're like, yeah, yeah, Snoopy. And then Roger always calls me Snoop and it's just the thing. It's been following me. I had no idea. Idea. I yeah. knew that you loved peanuts and the whole Charlie Brown gang, but I didn't know why. Yeah, yeah, it's been just kind of. And if you leave, there's a little Snoopy. I see play. it. Somebody's giving me. Some people give me Snoopy stuff all the time. It's a little silly, but if I'm gonna have to be like a cartoon character, I pick Snoopy. That's a good one. Yeah, it's and then, Snoopy conveyed a lot of his feelings without much said or yeah. anything said. Yeah, I don't know. I liked him, but yeah. So I started following that. The other person that I, I strangely like being connected to. One day I was sitting at the, um, talking to my sister. We we're all just chatting, having like a, you know, a dinner at our house or whatever. It was years ago. And I, I don't know what I was wearing or whatever, but I was sitting at the mantle talking to everyone with mm-hmm. like some drink in my head. And my sister was like, you're so like Dean Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, who wouldn't? I was like, I'm Dean Martin. You're the life of the party. I mean, he has a lot of bad, bad, bad baggage. Uh, yeah, yeah, he does. But, there, but there's still like something like you're like I'll intriguing. Take it. Yes, I'll take it. <laughs> so I'm Snoopy and Dean Martin. What about you? Who are you mm. compared to? Gosh, what cartoon character? Well, I'm trying to think back. The cartoons I used to love were uh, Inspector Gadget. Really? I loved Inspector Gadget. And uh, what was it? She-Ra, Princess Warrior? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Man, those are so different than mine. My... <laughs> I got I to gotta look this up. Okay. She-Ra and the Princess of Power. That sounds like you. Yeah, I, I totally see it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, because they had He-Man. That was the thing. My brother liked He-Man. And then I was like, why do I want to watch that guy? Yeah. And then I became obsessed with She-Ra. Oh my goodness. I f- have not thought about that in a really long time. I'm Jean. not sure I watched it. I'm sure there's more right now, but I can't. I'm totally drawing a blank. But I don't think I was ever... Co- oh, I love the Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> the I, I'm Muppety. Like, it's sweet to think about us as, as kids and loving that stuff. You know? know? You forget. Know. Totally. It is weird to think of us as little kids. I know. I mean, look, we probably have very, very different. And it's strange that we are connected now because I I definitely was not a reader like you are. I still am not. You're very, very well read and you love to read. I like to read, but I can't get into it because it wasn't something I grew up. I like it forced. You have to give me a really good book. And that's why I always ask everyone for recommendations. And so if you really loved it, I'll be like, okay. I'll read that one because I I can't handle how many books I start and stop, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I also, I used to never allow myself to stop a book, even if I didn't like it, because I thought 
I have to give it a chance and I can't put it down. Like it, it's, I don't know if I thought it was disrespectful <laughs> to the author, but um, I no longer have the luxury of finishing books I'm not into anymore. So now oh. I do put them down. You do. If, well, if it I, doesn't really capture me or grab me. But I love that, that you said um, that was disrespectful to the author. Well, first of all, our entire culture is all about the critic, right? You know, mm -hmm. they, we have, everybody's critical of everything. And I, not that I never was, I, I used to be too, have more, I feel like I've gotten, so, instead of getting harder in my old age, I've gotten even softer, if that's possible. But um Whereas I used to, you know, critique certain actors or, you know, filmmakers, and I still do sometimes, but now more often I'm like, well, I have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Like, <laughs> you yeah, never know yeah. how it's going to come out in the end. And they put a lot of work in and they, they took an idea and they actually tried it. That goes to the idea that as you get older, what you, and you've gone through a career path is the more successful a person is the more approachable and kind they become because they just, they have dropped all of that pretense. You know, yeah. Um, pretense and cutting, you know, edge that they had and they realize it's hard. They want to help. They've gotten help along the way. They want to help others. It's, it's kind of usually the people that are not as kind are not there. Yeah, they're still you know? struggling. It's like the cutthroat trying to get to where you want to go. Yeah. And you assume that you need an edge for that. So well, I, I guess in a, in a lot of jobs and especially if you're a minority or a female, you know, it has been that you needed that edge. Mm -hmm. you, could, you didn't have the luxury to no. be so nice, you know, no. but um, I think I told you I was at the, the, the breast center once mm -hmm. I may have told you the story before and they have a book of um successful you know women all different kinds of Jobs careers, or careers. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and there's a picture of them and then there's like a four or five questions you know and one of the things that they said in all of them um one of the things that they all wanted was to have more confidence Everybody, yeah. everybody wanted more confidence. And I just found that so interesting that these people are super successful and they still are searching for the confidence. You know, they still feel they still feel they have imposter syndrome. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of incredible. I I would love to see a book of men <laughs> that says I need more confidence. The confidence divide. The confidence divide. But anyway. we should probably introduce our next guest, yes. who we got to interview and was a blast to see her on Zoom because I hadn't seen her in years. So it was really nice. It was very nice to see Sydney Simon. Yes. Sydney Simon has been in the local market for 15 years. She's a real estate agent. She was also had a lot of lead positions in the PTA, as well as being on the board of a couple of lo local nonprofits. But we know her also as a local mom because we met um, when all our kids were at Nishuane. Yes. And she's a delightful person to see anywhere, anytime. And she's yes. very much a delight to talk to on this Zoom chat. So we hope you enjoy. Hi, guys. Let me just say I want to hug you up right now. <laughs> I really do want to give you a hug. I miss seeing you. I oh, don't my gosh. see you guys, too. It's just, it's been COVID. I mean, I don't know. It's just probably for you. It's It's been a blur. But I do miss you. We were so, you know, much a part of each other's lives yep. for so yep. many years. I know. When our kids were all young and we would see each other a lot. And it's so crazy to think that now our three kids are off to college next year i just know really thankfully strange. they they made it, <laughs> they made it. <laughs> our neighbor the other day in saying that the job now is just to get them out of high school just get them out just get get through this year because you know because they start to like check out know, they check out you know uh -huh. and i'm like okay how many absences are allowed do you <laughs> you know i'm like you better watch out because I remember Mackenzie, be careful. There was, she was missing and she had to make up some hours or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, stay on them with that. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. No, that's good to know because once I start getting those Genesis things that are like, you have an absentee letter. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> she, <laughs> she left the house. 
<laughs> oh, I, I yeah, know. she totally left the house. <laughs> the thing was, for us, it's PE. And I'm like, you're not going to not graduate because of PE, you know? <laughs> like, like, okay. So anyway, so on with the interview. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm going to interview. So one thing we want to know, how did you end up here in Montclair? And also, where'd you grow up? You know, like for people who don't really know you that well, um, it's been really fun to get to know where everybody's sort of come from and how they how they got here. So whatever you feel well, like sharing. I grew up in the Bronx, believe it or not. And I, did you guys know that? that I, I did. Bronx? You and I, I did know that because okay. my mom, my mom grew up in the Bronx so we talked about that. So I grew up in the Bronx and um, uh, I was either, I can't, I have an awful memory. So either 14 or 16, I think it was 14, we moved to um, Atlanta and we finished high school there. And then so stayed in Atlanta for many years until we moved here, what, 17 years ago? I can't believe it's 17 years. I know. Yes. And then, um, so I found New Jersey because one of my best friends from college uh, kept on saying, you should go to Montclair. You should go to Montclair. And you know, when people just, everybody starts coming to you and saying the same thing, you're like, oh, yeah. let, me, let me look at Montclair. Came here and visited and fell in love. Fell mm -hmm. in love. And we also looked at um, Princeton, which we knew wasn't a good fit because it was also very far. But when we came to Montclair, I just started talking to people, you know, how chatty I am. And everybody was so warm and wonderful. Yeah. And it was just, it was just the perfect fit. I felt it. Like when I tell clients, you're going to feel it when you come explore the town, you're going to know. I love that because it, it, it is a true thing. Like when we were telling our kids, when they're looking at college campuses, like you'll get a feel when you're on one, yeah. if it's maybe the right place for you. And we had a similar thing where everybody we met when when we were working in the city and living in Brooklyn would say, oh, you guys are so Montclair. You really <laughs> have to check out Montclair. I'm like, what even, what does that mean to be so right. Jersey a town? <laughs> you know, I have no idea. It's it's interesting because I feel like even though like you, you, they say you're so Montclair, it's like it's so many people are. It, yeah, it's, it's not it's one many type, different for sure. types right. of people right. here. And I think that's why it's attractive is it's not just one type of person. Exactly. Here, right. You know, and that's why I think the stories, why everybody ends up here, they have a little bit of a different, you know, of course, a lot of times it's somehow New York related, you know, that they end up here. But there's a lot of times. So you came from Atlanta. Yeah, directly to New Jersey because we knew it was going to be too expensive to live in the city. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, this was the perfect community, of course, because of the commute and the you know the number of train stations we have. So it was it was the perfect fit. And I don't think there wasn't even there wasn't even a second choice in towns. It was yeah, always right. it was always Montclair. I don't know that anyone said you're so Montclair. I don't think they said that to me, but I do say that, Rachel. I was like this, I, you know, once I get to know people, yeah. and I was like, this is, this is where you want to be. And they talk about what they want their children to experience. Exactly. And I can say, yeah, either here or some other neighboring towns that are similar in terms of the feel, because as yes. I said, the feel, um, just like with the college thing, because um, it's funny you say that because we all know Jackson yes. and he's not expressive like me or Mackenzie. He's cool. He's chill, right? He's mm -hmm. known for being chill Jackson. Yeah. And um, when he got to, he picked, figured out what school he wanted to go. So when he got to the school, he said, mom, this is my school. And we had done some other tours, but he said, this is where I want to be. And when he said that, I knew that's what, what we wanted to support. You know, it wasn't our first choice, but I, it felt right to him. So that just goes back to your story, Rachel, about when you know, you know. That's interesting what you said about it also not being your first choice, because I think what Ellie ended up choosing too, I, I wasn't even going to look at that school. <laughs> I was like, no. And then we go for tours and she's not feeling it. All these schools not feeling it. And then I'm like, fine, just add that. We'll just drive around, you know, go south because I, I, I didn't think we would look south. Mm -hmm. And then she was on a campus. She's like, yeah, this feels right. I, I really like this place. This feels right. Okay. I think that's exciting when you start to see your kids making up their own minds of what they want to experience next, whether it's a contrast to where they've been or something similar or not, but actually a good idea. Get, get out of here and see something else. Well, I think and it was a life lesson because we were in, I don't know if 
Jeanette, you probably remember this, that we were all hoping that jo- Jackson was born to go to Morehouse, right? Because John, oh, yeah. you know, it, we had to grieve, you know, and I was grieving for John because that wasn't Jackson's choice. But just like you said, this is their journey. And mm-hmm. you know how we insert ourselves as parents because we're, yeah. this is our, our lives is, is their life. You know, we're leaving, living vicariously through them. For sure. Yeah. 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 At least I was. Well, (laughs) I know Roger was just saying that during, while we were in the midst of it, you know, how we just kind of all are out of it now because the selections are happening, but you know, but during the process, Roger had said, somebody told him, you know, in all of this process, remove your child and put yourself there. Cause that's really what you're doing. You know, it's like, you're applying, you know, you're doing it. It's for, it's what you want to envision for yourself, but doing it for your child. Yeah. Or even like a redo, you know, I found myself seeing all these schools thinking, Ooh, I would love to be here or I would love to be there, but that's also adult Rachel, with a lot of uh, hopefully some more wisdom and growth and understanding myself a bit more. And then I really, you know, it's hard. It is a grieving process because you're like, Oh, right. They're separate from me. Sydney, I was curious, was there any hesitancy to move to New Jersey? Was there any like preconceived notion of New Jersey or anything like yeah. that or no? No, I, I had none at all. I Do just, you... well, I hear other people on the podcast talk about New Jersey. Like, you know, now that I've heard things like it's the armpit of America or something like that. But hey, <laughs> I know, like, right? It has bad I... PR. It has bad PR. You know, you don't have that with your clients. They They don't have like any no. concerns about that. That's good. That's well, no, they, okay. Some of them can be a little judgy in the sense that I'm from New York, you know, Upper West Side or Park Slope. And I say, listen, we are very sexy here in Montclair. Yeah. Let me just tell you, if you're moving from New York, it's not like a downgrade. It's yeah. an upgrade in the sense that you have more space and you have, we have museums and we have two libraries. So I, and we have amazing restaurants that people travel from all around to come visit. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We, you know, so I just help them understand that it's not, oh, I'm going to the suburbs, I'm going to die. You know, it's more <laughs> of, <laughs> it's more of just the next phase of your life. And you're going to be much happier in the green space, right? Uh, how much do you do you feel like as a real estate agent, I would think you deal with people in really emotional, you know, oh, life-changing yeah. moments. And you're so wonderful to be able, yeah. your personality, to be able to make people feel comfortable going through a huge deal of buying a home in a different place. Well, so here's the thing. And you guys, you both know me personally and, and all that good stuff. So you know my innards. Mm-hmm. And I would say that I'm a nurturer, okay? So it's not important. It's it's not a real estate transaction, right? So it's, I mean, and this is who I am. So I'm not going to just try to sell you a house. It has to be a good fit. And I kind of cornily, meaning being corny, call myself the house whisperer because I don't want somebody just walking, okay, I'm just so you know, um, exhausted by this process. I'm going to buy this house. I'm like, no, you're not. We're going to find you the right house. I mean, I'm just going to keep it totally real. I'm totally honest. You, you are. Know, I'm too honest. <laughs> and I'm very opinionated, but, and I've had to learn to kind of just step back a little bit um, and just kind of let the process happen um, and not insert my opinion or not instantly. I'll say, okay, what do you think opposed to say before I say what I think? Mm-hmm. But I people feel good about that, knowing that I do care. You can call me me at all hours. Be, and that's another thing. I have no boundaries. And you know that too. Um, because this <laughs> uh, is a big, that's this a, is a big, familiar thing. I understand. Exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's a big deal. They're spending so much money and they're nervous. And if they're first time home buyers, or even if they're not, they have questions. So I want them to know that they can reach out to me. I want them to know that, you know, they're going to be my neighbor. I don't want to see them at you know, I don't really go to Kings that much because I have to spend like two hundred dollars every time I go. <laughs> but I keep it to like Chobani yogurt or something. I try to keep it really, yeah, you know, yeah. the short before I get to Trader Joe's. But anyway, so I just want them to know that I don't want them to say, "Well, Sydney just sold me that house, and she, you know, she didn't tell me about this." Or uh, mm-hmm. you know, so th- there are some things that um, I'm extra. I mean, I'm extra communicative about everything. So. 
No, anyway. That's that's a really good quality. I mean, that's why I think it's so you're doing so well is because you make people feel comfortable and they know they can trust you. You're one of these people that every time we run into you, we're happy to see you. It's a superpower of yours, I would say, in some way. And I'm yes. curious, how how is that something that you just were born with? Or did you meet someone along the way that inspired you? That's a really good question. My mom was, I was very similar to my mom. And I think I've always been this person. I've always, I've got friendly, friendliest in high school. But um, what I've come to believe or know about myself is that uh, people remember how you, how you make them feel. Who said that? That's Maya Angelou or somebody yes, like that. And it is, it. yeah. Right, so Maya Angelou. And I just, um, I don't know that I'm doing it um, intentionally. This is kind of who I am. And I was thinking, yeah. Jeanette, when you said, you know, you are authentically happy to see somebody, probably because I've picked you up and hugged you so tight that you can Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I guess, um, no, no, I guess my mom, she had such a kind of traumatic life and her life experiences and um, and probably never felt loved by her parents. But anyway, that's that's a whole nother podcast. But, um, no, that, but I just... Well, you know, I don't want to get too gritty. I'll have you guys crying. But, <laughs> um, That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she just, you know, I just, uh, she always wanted to make us feel loved and cared for. And I think that um, I have a lot of those traits. And and what I always realize is you never know what people are going through. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, that's, we always kind of, our head goes to one, oh, they were rude to me, or they, you know, they aren't very nice, or they they always have a grimace on their face. But you just never know what people are going through. And I think that if we all just kind of took a moment to remember that and not take everything so personally, mm-hmm. um, it would really be a good thing. It would really, because it's not all about us. They, are, they could be dealing with some serious stuff. I value that you just said that, because I also, I feel like that's what I try to teach the girls to growing up, you know, if they felt like somebody's being so mean to me or, you know, why are they excluding me or why are they acting this way? And I would just try to remind them, you know, you don't know what they're going on, what's going on at home. You know, everybody has a lot going on and you just, yeah, like you said, try to take it less personally and see that uh, there's another quote that I know is pretty trite, but you know, hurt people, hurt people, and I, I remind myself of that. I never met a self help book I didn't love. <laughs> me either, and my mother gave that to me. It's true, it's true. and it's so funny because um, Mackenzie and I took um, Mackenzie's twenty four now, guys. I don't know oh my you're... gosh, yeah, twenty four. Twenty four. So those of you, you know, you can't relate, Jeanette, but of course Rachel can. She has two girls. Yeah. Um, you know, it could be. <laughs> You know, it's it's a lot. You know, so she has a strong personality. I have a strong personality, and we've got, finally gotten to the point where we're, you know, good friends, and we can really talk and hang out. So we just got back from our first annual um, mother daughter trip. Oh, that's beautiful! And it was it was fantastic. I mean, we just got back yesterday, and it was really wonderful. And we were in the Sky Club or something because there was a delay of our flight, and the the bartender was just not a happy guy. And she has my personality for the most part. And she's in hospitality. So she was like, you can't, as a bartender, you can't be so grumpy. She didn't say that, but she's thinking that. Mm -hmm. And I say, um, yeah, Mackenzie, let's just be a smile and just give him some great energy. And I remember leaving him a tip and she's like, well, mom, he doesn't deserve that amount. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it's going to change, it's going to change his day or something it wasn't that much but in her mind you know it's he's in the service industry he should be upbeat but anyway so I don't know I guess we have to try to show our children just like you guys said how to treat people yeah and sometimes it's it's fun to see or it's wonderful to see a surprise like when you do that to somebody you are giving them it's like your own version of giving them a hug because you know that they're probably in a bad space you know yeah. And I'm also hopeful that I can have a trip one day. <laughs> Mother daughter trip. Woo! You'll get there. <laughs> yeah. It's my mom used to joke that I, it was like that boomerang around the the sun and I was gone for a while and she was like, "What is that girl doing?" 
Well, I don't understand her finding herself, but I'm glad she's back. But it took a while. It doesn't seem like you'd be defiant. You seem like when I heard on the podcast that you were love solid gold, I didn't even know you danced. (laughs) Oh, she's a good dancer. She's a yeah. Okay, that's very nice of Jeanette to say, considering she never saw me, you know, in my kick line days. No, but I've seen you at some of these school functions get out there and do like the shuffle. And I'm like, hmm. The shuffle. Do not be saying to people I've done a shuffle pretty well. No. No. I don't know. I don't know. But that's what I see. I don't know. It's some sort of line dance. No, thing I do it. not line dance. Oh my gosh. No, okay, I, you you can edit all that out, Rachel. Oh, we oh. totally played you, Rachel. The shuffle, yeah. not the electric slide or Ooh, something. That, I don't know. Maybe it was an electric slide. I don't no, know what it I, is. First of all, would never do the electric slide. Thank you very much. That well, is what, not what is it? or Soul what, Train. No. What is it that they play at those school Hip hop. Hip hop. No, it's there's, a, there's a particular song that everybody like moves in and knows it. Yeah, it's but I did not do that one. I would step I would, out for that. I swear, I saw. I don't you want do any it. part of an electric slide. Okay, Jeanette, know I don't that know. About it me. looked cool. Oh, to me. A stupid shuffle or something like that. Yes, no, something no, like that. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, how does everybody know the steps? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can put a reel together with some Soul Train, Solid Gold, and Dance Party USA, and I feel like we can help you out. Too. All right, all right. No, I was I'm so good. happy you said you knew what that was, Sydney. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. I, you know, I was saying, I'm the lady with the long hair. She yes. Was, her name was Cheryl Song, and I used to be like, come on. They used to call me City growing up, not City. 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 <laughs> oh, nice. I used to turn around and do the. Anyway, I loved her too. She had that long, long, yes. beautiful hair. Yeah. And she went on to do video anyway. So this is not yeah, a podcast. choreography. No, it's totally podcast because I have a question. When was oh. the last time that you guys danced? Like really were like went out and went dancing? Yeah, we're dancing. Not not in your kitchen. Believe it or not, and you guys probably know this about me. I'm a dancer, but I don't really get out. I guess I get out. But when I go to a party, I'm like sweating. Uh, like one party. And I think I broke my knees that night or one knee. I really did it. But I'm just sad. <laughs> I, was, I, would, I would get down, on my, you know, and just go down to my knees. Uh-huh. You know, you get right. low. Oh, I know. I know. I totally can do that. But then I can't get back up as exactly. easily. Exactly. <laughs> so, and then I go around the room and I'm pointing to people that- <laughs> Like you go, come here, get here. <laughs> so it's like I want to involve them. Come on, get out here. So anyway, so like, I don't, I, I don't know. You don't do TikToks with the kids. I don't either. But I'm just asking. No, okay. no. I feel, I, I, feel- I, I did. I did pull. I did pull off pulling it, like learning one of them and like getting to the point where I was like, I could post this, but I won't do it. You know, <laughs> my well, my girls outdance me, Sydney. So there's um, no way I'm putting myself so next to them. So they got that rhythm from you. Uh, yeah. Although Bill would be like, "No, wait, me too." <laughs> I'm like, "Fine, fine. We did dance to. I did like you because you could dance. That was a definite." But <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. And I was joke when I see the white kids here. Not to make it white or black, but it's it's a thing. They have so much rhythm. They're like, "Whoa, what?" Did- is it in the water? Right. right. Like, what the heck? Maybe that's why they said you belong to Montclair, Rachel. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome because they saw my rhythm. They're like, we heard it, you know, you you are, you, this is way. the town for you. This is <laughs> Montclair has people that can dance in it. Right. Oh um, my therefore, gosh. I well, must be able to dance, you know. So I'm just saying, well, I oh, saw you move a little bit, Jeanette. I don't know. We got to work. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. We'll have to. Yeah, we'll, we will work on it. <laughs> no, I'm good. Oh I got gosh. my own skills. Okay. <laughs> good. Yeah, you're an artist. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I've got my thing. Um, so, all right, you guys. So on to Montclair and what you do. So yes. you're, we, we definitely have established that you're a, one of the nicest real estate agents anyone could ever have the pleasure of working with absolutely right and and you but i'm curious like you've been you've worked this uh this area in the real estate market you've gone from w- one agency to another have you always like work with just an agency or have you gone on your own because i know that's a thing 
Yeah, I haven't. I like the flexibility. I, I like to have a nice work-life balance. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, so no, I've never gone on my own, but can I just say one more thing real quick about this, what we were talking about? So I have this client. So when you're with a client, you, you spend so much time together, right? So yes. it's like, you are married to them for, depending upon how mm-hmm. long it takes to find the house. So this one couple, um, she's like, you know, very serious and the husband's funny, but she's like very serious. And so we'll like tour these houses and, you know, Sydney's not serious. She can be serious, but mm-hmm. um, so we're touring the houses and one house has in town has the music blaring and I just start dancing in the bathroom with her. <laughs> So if she just starts laughing and it's that's like, perfect. I, she needed me to do that. I didn't know it was very organic, but um, talking about the dancing thing, she just yeah. thought that was so much fun. So we bonded in that moment. Um, that's so great gosh, that you were able to reach her that lightened, way. She lightened up. She lightened up for a little. She did. She didn't. It really, it really changed because that's because I was saying that's who I am. I'm just going to be who I authentically am. Mm-hmm. And um wanted to talk about that because I think it's so important just since we talked about dancing. I'm totally fine being a buyer's and seller's agent. So I don't I don't want to pursue my broker's license. It's so funny because my friend asked me that the other day and I was like, no, I'm okay. But thanks. So yeah. And so also I just have known through the years that you guys take really wonderful vacations and stuff. Is that something that's it it's important. I remember early on when our boys were really close, when they were younger, we were asking you guys, like, you guys go on a lot of vacations. It's really, we need to learn from you how to do, you know, how to do it. Cause we just, you know, we were like a new family. We didn't understand how to take family vacations and all that kind of stuff. And you're, you're, you really make a point to enjoy life. I've noticed that. So it is, like I said, I work really, really hard and so does Jonathan, but we play really hard and we have a lot of friends that love to travel. So it's definitely been a priority. And and again, you guys know Jackson, he's pretty chill um, and he's easy. So he's like been raising himself for the past couple of years. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. I like that. It's always good to let them raise yeah. themselves a bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. he's going to college in a minute, give him the Uber Eats account. Yes, what, that's what it. Need? Yeah. And now he's driving. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. It's, it's wonderful. Um, it is. But it's, it is very, very important to us. Like John is going to be um, taking, uh, you know, he thinks he's a sommelier. He's, he loves wine. And he's taking a trip actually with a Montevino. To, they're going to Paris and oh my gosh. To wine country there. So, and I'm not going, he's like, you want to go? I was like, I don't like wine like that. No, he's kind of put the love of travel um, in my spirit, but I, I particularly love beach vacations where it's warm. I don't want to go anywhere. It's cold. Cause I want to yeah. get a tan. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my main motivation, but, um, Jackson doesn't really have the love of travel. He'll go, but he's like, Oh, do we have to get on a plane? Mackenzie <laughs> loves it. She's just always trying to be somewhere else and travel somewhere. So I think that they all have, uh, except for Jackson. Cause he just, I was like, Jackson, what do you want to do for spring break? He was like, nothing. I'm going to stay in Montclair. Oh, oh okay. Montclair. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I have one like that too. I have one that doesn't really find, doesn't understand why people want to travel. He's like, it's more of a hassle, you know? Is you that know? Milo? No. It's, yeah. Milo, Milo likes traveling. I mean, he doesn't like the whole rigmarole of like the plane and stuff, but in Colorado, we were at this tippy top, beautiful vista i mean it was just breathtaking and there was nobody there but snow caps and a moose in the background oh wow and he's like he's like i could live here and i was like <laughs> really and all that peace oh that's yeah so good. and so i mean it, so when you go and travel and you hear somebody have that ma- appreciation of just it's like inside them in some way. So Sydney, is there anything that uh, you want to highlight in this interview about where we live or what you do or a message you'd like to get out to the, to all of our fellow New Jerseyans? So when I was looking here, when John and I were looking here, there was this, we had one agent, but there was this other agent. I don't know where she came from, but maybe we walked into the, to the, um, building and she was there and she was like you know what Montclair is so fantastic and I was thinking to myself she is drinking the Kool-Aid like she was just she said more but I was like wow she's doing too much with this whole Montclair description but in hindsight I was like oh my god she's so right it it really is a special place and 
And the only thing I would say is that it's so hard to get a house here now. It's so uh-huh. expensive. And I just wish that wasn't the case. I mean, yes, yeah. it's great for sellers, um, but she, all, all the money that people are paying, you know, spending on these houses, it's just making it so unattainable for so many people. Mm-hmm. And that just kind of breaks my heart a little bit because it could also change the landscape of the town. Right. Um, but I think that also people that move to Montclair want to be here and they choose this community because they want a certain makeup, right? And I just, Absolutely. they could live in Westchester, they could live in Connecticut or, you know, and they choose Montclair. So I, it, with all of our taxes, <laughs> you know. Right. I read so, somewhere actually that somebody once said that um, when the, somebody was complaining about the taxes here, they said it was a, a people tax. It's Ooh, you're, like, paying, yeah. you're paying high taxes because the people are that awesome. Yeah. And they are like, awesome. Yeah. And I think we all feel it, right? That's why we live here. I mean, nothing's perfect. No. But I do think that people try to be their, their best selves here, mm-hmm. you know, and they try to um, stay open and, and stay um, receptive to, to everything, to differences, to, you know, I mean, it's a very progressive town, as you guys know, and I, I really appreciate that. I really do. Mm-hmm. It, it, the interest rate is probably also put a big, big change in the industry because that that's completely new in this last year. Right. So, so, and we thought it was going to really, you know, decrease the number of buyers. Yes, there's a decrease in number of buyers, but houses are still going way over asking. Mm-hmm. It's, it's still, you know, um, Again, we thought that the market would really slow down because of the interest rates, but they haven't. I mean, oh. lenders have come up with other ways, mm. you know, to figure it out because they'll go back down in the next couple of years. I mean, what we say is, and I, and I can't remember the agent that told me this, you, um, you date the rate and marry the house, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, still be out and, you know, still look for a house because you have to have a place to live. Mm-hmm. But this is a situation at this point in time. And, you know, in the next few years or a couple of years, the interest rates will go down. You can refinance. But peop, again, people are going to need a, need a place to live. So find your house. But uh, so the market is still very vibrant, ladies. So be happy about that. Do people, if people wanted to, you know, get in co- contact with you, how do, how do they contact you? I mean, do you have a... So the funny thing is, is that probably 90% of my business are from referrals. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, um, that's, that's not I, I believe it. I believe yeah. it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, they can go to my, not my, not my website, because the website is fine, but the Instagram is where all the people are going now. Instagram, so, okay. Yeah. But yeah, so Sydney Simon Holmes on Instagram, mm-hmm. um, and they can reach out that way, or, you know, of course, they can go on the Google machine, and I'm there. And it's like, so it's so funny, because there's, I Google myself mm-hmm. sometimes, and there's all these interviews. And when I went to Jamaica years ago, there's this article. I think it was like 10 years ago. I was featured in an article in Jamaica and they were asking me, what's your favorite dress? The little black dress. It was so corny. Anyway, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I want to find out what that exactly you. is your favorite dress, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know this. Now I'm obsessed with navy. So you will always, oh, uh, you, I, I'm, I'm on, I'm on the Navy train too. I, I don't too. know what happened. Like Navy Ooh. used to be so never. And now <laughs> it's kind of like, wait a minute. I yep. resent that. Um, never. I'm, yeah. For a while there, it was kind of like lost, you know, it was in the eighties. It was like the Navy <laughs> suit, you know, and then it died oh, yeah. out. That's what I mean. Obsessed. Uh, but I'm, I think I'm going to, Oh, but you know, I have a new um, palette. So my new palette is the combination of like tan and white. You, you guys Ooh. have all those colors together. Or yeah. like your your shirt, I, Rachel, and off-white jeans or something. Oh, that would be nice. I love that look. I love yeah. that. Anyway. I like gray a lot. You like gray? Yeah. I'm over I'm gray. gray. I'm yeah. I'm a I'm a gray person, um, but uh, <laughs> just in spirit. Are there? I'm not, are the, there... I'm not the person you see on the street that makes you happy. I'm the one that like, like I'm it. like you know what you're being a jerk. I'm gonna be a jerk right back at you. I don't know what's going on in your life, and I don't <laughs> it care. Matter. Get over it when you're in public. All right. right. Be a better person. <laughs> be a better. I'm more like Mackenzie. You know what? This tip is gonna be low. <laughs> 
my gosh. No trophies. That's oh, right. For, no trophies for showing up here. No, I'm kidding. I'm not that hard usually. Um, but um, usually. <laughs> I have a question, Sydney. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, so when you're like to make your house feel like a home, do you buy flowers or how do you make or candles? What's your way to, you know, feel like your home? That's a good question. It has to be clean. Like, I okay, so <laughs> I, okay. So when I leave for vacation, my house, I'm a little crazy. My house has to be like spotless, right? So that when I come home, are you like that too? I'm a hundred percent like that. Oh, I'm glad I'm not awesome. the only person that does that. It. But I, so I love candles, anthropology candles are my favorite. Oh, me too. Right? Yeah. And you me know, there's, too. there's this new, we bought it because a, um, a listing that I went to had it where it sprays out the scents. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. Era or something. So when you, you can put it on a timer so it sprays out mm -hmm. this whatever scent you want. Ooh, I and want that. It, Great. I think it's A-E-R-A or a, there are a bunch of people are doing it now. Okay. Um, but it's, I love that. And, um, I buy flowers. I, when I'm at Trader, Trader Joe's, I buy the, you know, the tulips, they make me happy, Yeah. but I don't know if it's clean. I'm just like, that just really, you know, calms me. I'm not anxious. I like order. So do you have to help people declutter when they are trying to sell? I give, I don't hold back for sure. I mean, I yeah. think that, um, it's hard and, and I'm a little controlling too, by the way. So, <laughs> so, it's, so it's hard, um, for people because of, you know, we, we are used to a certain thing, you know, it makes us comfortable. So you, people also don't want to be judged. So I, I'm very gentle in the way that I say, you know, that we just need to have my stager come in. Let's just kind of declutter. And, you know, this is, we love these pictures on the walls, but people have to see themselves in the home. So let's, mm -hmm. let's kind of neutralize the space, but we want to keep the soul of the house. Like if the house has a soul, which many of our homes do, we want to retain that. Um, but yeah, we just got to help sellers understand that this is no longer your home. This is a product and we have to <laughs> make no, it more attractive to the masses. So, yeah, that makes sense. And it's yeah. probably also hard because they feel like, well, but it, you know, they feel emotional attachment totally. and to take down their photos. That's got to be hard. I'm not going to look forward to that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. especially because these homes have raised families. Right. And it's, it's such a thing. So it's interesting when you think about it, it's like you have it from both directions that, you know, you have it from the seller being emotional and the buyers just, you know, frazzled and emotional as well. Cause it's such a hard process. It's a, it, that's it's, a hard that's job. A lot. It's hard. It is a hard job. And I don't, my kids don't realize that, but, but we'll, we'll tell them next time we run please, into them. Yeah, please. we will. So you mom works really hard. Um, but <laughs> I don't know yeah. if it's as hard as a podcast, but <laughs> it's hard as sitting here with just a mic oh, and having fun having but, fun this is terribly hard but the seller's perspective is definitely more emotional I think because mm. you know I think we all want to be liked and we all want people to like our houses and and it we could take it very personal you know when and there's all these cameras in houses too mm. so <laughs> that's right like, right so people like oh my god this paint color is so ugly or, you know, so, you know, buyers can be, you know, you got to be careful. So sellers could be potentially listening. <laughs> That's oh my so interesting. I, I know about that. Yes. I would not want to listen to what anyone said. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either, Rachel. I oh. just, yeah. Wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, so, you know, we wrap these uh, interviews up by asking what name some things that you like about Montclair and New Jersey, but I feel like this whole interview has been... <laughs> <laughs> like, a love letter. I, I love yeah. letter to Montclair. Really, and I think other people have said, but one of my favorite restaurants is The Corner. And I mm. wish that, you know, I just love the vibe. I love the baked eggs. Oh, that's um, my favorite. So, but real, nobody else I, eats it, I feel like. I, that's what I get every single time. It's so good. It's so oh, good. It's and the I'll best. Add, I'll add bacon and I want them to cook it a certain way. And my husband will roll his eyes because I'm so particular. But it's just, it's, it's like something I look forward to. And I also love La Sabienne on Walnut. Oh yeah. It's so wonderful. It's I so love yummy. that place. Isn't it good? And they have the best yeah. lamb sausages and the owners are so good looking. Both of them, Christine They're and John. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Right? They're gorgeous. <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't know a model opened up a shop in a, in a restaurant. And uh, yeah, I was so yeah. happy when they expanded so that, yeah. that, yeah, you can get in more often. Because when it first opened, it was so tiny. They maybe had four tables. So right. But, but I would shove sweet. myself in there. And I would too. <laughs> Glad you're giving a shout out to La Sabuen and also, yeah, yeah the corner. Yeah. Those baked eggs. I don't know why yeah. anyone else isn't ordering that. So I, good. I, I have a feeling that they are. That's what's still <laughs> with you. No, they're not. I <laughs> they're like, they, only, they only have it there for you too. It's like, that's it. You know, <laughs> these two. I look, I look and see. Uh, Sydney, I do the same thing. I look around at the other yeah. tables and I'm like, why is nobody else getting this amazing right. dish? Do you not understand how good this is? Well, oh. I feel like we, well, now everyone's going to know. Go get the baked better. eggs at the corner. Yes. And tell Jeff, he said hello. I don't want to end. I don't want this I know. Day. It's so nice Bye. chatting with you. It's, it's so nice to see you. Oh, I miss you guys. Well, maybe oh. we'll all go to the corner together. Can we please? And what are we going to have? What are we going to have? Baked Jeanette, eggs. What are you going to eat? Yeah. yeah. You can't order anything else, Jeanette. Sorry. I'll, I'm going to yeah. have something else. You know, I know you're not. Be, I, I like to be different. You're so contrarian. <laughs> I like to be Such different. A rebel. Oh, wait, I'm going to wear gray. Exactly. Wear gray. You guys can wear like, you know, festive clothes. Yeah. <laughs> this is the funniest thing. I was, I think a day or so ago, I see a text, not a text, but a message from Milo. I was like, what's happening? I said, maybe Jeanette's calling me from his phone. So I listened to the message and I, it's like a, a whole like three minute message but I can't hear anything. I can hear him talking, but I can't understand a word he's saying. Was so, it like an accidental dial? Yes, it, was. dial? It, it was. And I said, Milo, I'm not a texter. I said, Milo, I think you, I said, I, I couldn't understand your message. And he was like, oh, I didn't mean to, to, to te- or call you. But it was so funny. I was like, wow. I Milo. know. There's some, there, you know, Sydney, there's just this like thing about those boys when they were young and those pictures of them sleeping, oh you know, God. having sleepovers when they were just so little in those years. It's just so, so I know what you felt. If I got that from Jackson, I'd be like, Jackson, Jackson's calling me. <laughs> but my kid's so tall now. Like who knew that was coming? I know. Cause he was such a little one, right? He's a man now. <laughs> And so is Jackson and Ellie's a total grown up lady. Ellie. I think I would faint if I saw Ellie. You would, love. you would not believe it. The thing with another thing about Montclair is that these kids, and I always talk to my clients about the kids have such a sense of independence here. Yes. And um, the relationships they have, and it's just, oh, growing up from, you know, pre-K or whatever, they just, it's wonderful. Special. I agree. I really do feel like also because of how you can choose what school to go to. So you yeah. don't necessarily go to the school at all that's near your house. You have friends from the neighborhood. You have friends from across town because yeah. of school. And I think Montclair does a good job of, you know, letting everyone meet each other. And so right. by the time they got to high school, they knew a lot of the people, even if they didn't go to school with them. Totally. I liked that. Yeah. But one thing that I, I, I feel like with Montclair is that our kids are kind of in a little bit of a utopia in a weird way because of the oh, diversity yeah. and just, you know, the the towns, just all the different things that happen here. It's like when they leave here, it's really not a common thing throughout the country to have towns like Montclair is with the, just the eclecticness of it all, you know? Well, what I also say is, we are, I said, you know, when we choose Montclair, we're giving our kids a gift, okay. as you just said, because we can choose communities that are more homogenous or not as progressive, but we choose to raise our kids here and we give them a new lens, right? So if they were to leave our town, they're going to have certain expectations. They're going to expect to see different people, not a homogenous community. That's community. Right. They're going to expect, like, where are all the whatever? Mm-hmm. Where's the, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I love that we, did that you know so kudos to us yes yeah i say that too kudos to us like you said there nothing is perfect no place is perfect but at least i feel like our town tries right um they try 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 again to get it right and most people here are open-minded and and want to create a utopia of some sort you know 
Okay, so until our breakfast brunch date at the corner, we Mm -hmm. have a a nice way to wrap up this lovely and unfortunately ending interview with Sydney. I know. (laughs) I guess we have to let you get back to work. So until we see you at the corner, what uh, our new sign off is: get lost. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. It seems okay. so abrupt. Get lost. I know, like, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah, here. no, I don't. I think, think we might have to. It doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work, work with Sydney. Yeah. Let's get lost together. Together. Okay. That's it. I prefer that. Yeah. Thank yeah you. Me too. Me too. Miss you guys so much. And I, I really want us to connect. Okay. Let's yeah. We, we will. Don't, I'm warning you. You're going to see a text come through real soon. Please, please. Let's make <laughs> it happen. And thank you so much for doing this interview, Sydney. I'm so proud of you guys. So good for you. Thank, thank you. you. We're having fun. All right. All right. Bye, All right. Sydney. Bye, Sydney. Thanks. Bye, Bye. Thank you. This podcast is produced by Rachel Martens, Jeanette Afsharian, and just kidding. It's just us. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Buzzsprout. Please follow us on Instagram at lostin.jersey. Facebook is just Lost in Jersey. And our website is lostinjersey.site. That's right, dot site. We don't need a dot com. Get lost. Thank you.